Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about major refactors. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, when do you decide to do a major refactor of an existing code base? When I have consistent problems with quality in the system. That's usually when I do it. Uh, when uh, it's difficult for me to efficiently like do the things that you sort of expect that people should be doing. Uh, writing basic unit tests or uh, adding new features without causing regressions or adding features without having a hard time figuring out how to do this. Uh, where it becomes tricky for me due to the f current implementation to actually extend upon that functionality without having to basically rethink an entire approach and in many cases make a lot of compromises in order to make that thing work. So let me explain that a little bit. Uh, I've worked with a few, pr uh, quite a few products now where the thing that I've tried to uh, try to coach uh, some software developers into understanding is that uh, just because a feature works a certain way right now or it's written in a certain way right now doesn't necessarily mean that it still makes sense uh, in the next feature you're going to work on. So if you pick up a piece of software and you're supposed to add something to it and it's painful for you to add something to it without, as I said, causing regressions, not really understanding how to do this thing or like how to make your thing fit with the thing that is already there, then you should talk, uh, start asking yourself the question, is it really worth trying to further go down this road or will it be simpler to boy scout this thing or can I like reshuffle it a little bit so that it is uh, so it becomes, uh, can you simplify the problem? That's basically what I'm saying. Instead of just keeping the current implementation intact and adding things on top, because that's the thing that leads to what I call shim programming, where people shim in their feature, even though it's just making the problem, or like it just adds to the complexity because the abstraction or the piece of logic isn't really well written in the first place. And then it's like having a shitty car or something like you just keep on adding stuff to the shitty car and it is a shitty car at the end of the day but it's just going to keep on getting shittier and shittier and the issues that you have with it just keeps on growing right so when i get to that point where i see that i'm not really confident in that this feature works as intended or i'm not really confident that i could make this change without introducing a regression and that i feel this this as, at a consistent level that's usually when I do a major, major refactor. Now, I usually don't tell people to do like these big rewrites because they usually don't work. What I usually tell people is that you try to draw a line in the sand and you go and basically say that, all right, let's formulate an idea, a technical strategy for how to get to the state that you want to be in, which is, of course, it has to be feasible, right? to address the core things, the things that actually has an impact on the overall stability of your system. And it can be like you have a specific set of classes that are not working, or you might have some really, really ugly functions or UI components or something like that that just keeps on growing and they're too big or so forth. And usually I find that the most common answer to all my problems is, all right, I need to break these things out into smaller pieces and I need to make them clean and put them in somewhere where it's easy to reference them or find them or something like that. That's almost the answer every single time breaking things out if things go too big usually and if you it can usually help by just uh, like breaking them out into smaller pieces that's my my thoughts at the very least and so when i've identified how i want to approach the problem i do the thing that i call uh, picking leaves uh, and the idea behind picking leaves is very simply it, it's basically a, topo a topological sort problem where you have in every system as i've said a few times to you before guys everything in everything in a program is a tree basically uh, like you have a function that depends on a fu or a class that depends on a class that depends on a class that depends on a class or in the ui you have a parent and then you have a child and then you have a child like something that just depends on the next thing right and at some point you will reach the end node the thing that either just connects to the database which you can argue for as a leaf as well but you have some piece of functionality that is 
isolated in the thing that you want to achieve. So you might want to refactor that big like thing that was ugly written in your front end or you might have this super class that does too much in the back end or something like that. But the problem is that that thing is so coupled to a bunch of other stuff so if you wanted to change that one thing you have to change a hundred other things that are not so nice. And so what I usually do is that I go and I trace the all the things that I would have to move in order to decouple that thing enough so that I can change the thing I want to change. And you basically look at the dependency graph and you try to find the thing that is easiest to move and take that as the first step. And that's the boy scouting where where the boy scouting comes in. Because now I know that all right, I won't be able to rewrite this whole thing, but I can establish with my coworkers sort of tell them about this problem give them a solution, a suggestion for how to pull away, say, this leaf uh, class or this thing that is basically, it's just, it's, uh, it's something, if I move that thing and I write it in the right way, then we can repeat that process until we basically decouple that main thing and can put that into the clean, pristine state, like, because usually when you get to these sorts of big rewrites problems, you have a coupling problem, which is like the number one thing that happens in most software that gets really shitty. It's almost always coupling. But that becomes the basic strategy. And then you tell your like, co-workers that, all right, this is how we're going to do this and we'll do it story by story. Or, yeah, I mean, you can have dedicated stories. I like to, as I said, sometimes you have, uh, you're working on associated code or something like that. And you, if you just have a gentleman's agreement or you have some idea within the team of what to do in these sort of circumstances and then you help each other remind each other that you know we want to write this way we, it's great if you can break that thing out and put that in that folder or put it in that structure because that means that we will get closer to being able to fix that thing that is the like the really big problem but it's it's a bit like paving the road for bigger and better things uh, that will happen later and that strategy works fairly well I would say because at worst case scenario you never get to the big thing that you want to achieve best but even if you don't you're still putting the other pieces into a better state because you're basically paying attention to those smaller details and decoupling things in the uh, so that you can <laughs> so you can unblock yourself to do the big thing and that in of itself has a value and in the best case uh, it's actually very quick because guys, I, I think that I, this approach, doing uh, having an, uh, an understanding of how to reach a clean state with whatever you're trying to refactor and having a boy scouting rule that you actually continuously apply in this manner. And as I said, you try to pick leaves along the way. It's helped me fix more code bases than anything else I've ever seen. And it really is that simple. The tricky part I usually find is, is is not to come up with a strategy for how to do this, is to get people to do it consistently over time because it's a little bit like going to the gym or something like that. It's something that sounds great in theory, but I find it much harder to get people to stick with the plan because of well, yeah, we can talk about the reasons, but it's everything from that they don't th you people don't think about it, people don't want to scope creep on their story, etc. Et so there are all these reasons that just as you know you don't have time to go to the gym or you're too tired or stuff like that. It's always something that stops you from doing it, but when you actually do do it, it works really well. So what I want you to take away from this is that I usually decide to do major refactors when I see that the overall quality of the system goes to a point where I don't long, people don't even trust the system anymore, where like you have you lack confidence in that the thing is actually working, or you lack confidence in changing things about the code. You're scared of regressions, or you have fear of release, or things like that. That's usually when you have the warning flags because like if you have confidence in the system you shouldn't be afraid to release things you shouldn't be afraid that you cause regressions whenever you work on something you shouldn't be scared of your own code for the god's sakes it's just code if it gets to that point it's usually due to this the, to an issue that you can solve and i usually don't as i said promote doing big rewrites i try to tell people create a strategy for, this, for where you want to be. Figure out where the main issues are that causes all of this uncertainty and what, where your problems actually are. And then try to break it down into a topological problem where you start with the thing that is least 
dependent on everything else so that it, the thing that is easiest to start moving into the new structure you want and then pick each thing because the more things you pick if you pick them in the right order you do very little work but you unblock more work and you then you unblock the next thing because everything is basically a tree and for before you know it you have unblocked so much stuff that you can get at the thing that was ugly, that was the absolute worst the absolute ugliest uh, it's a strategy that works really well. The tricky part is to get the team to remember to do it as they go along. Some teams prefer to do the, you know, break things into stories and so forth, but that can also very quickly turn into the big rewrite. So be a little bit, you know, you have to f f figure out what works for your team. Uh, but you should know that it's a bit of a challenge to make people commit to this because some, a lot of people want you to go in big bang, do this once, then it's perfect. That very rarely works and it takes a lot of investment and so forth and so forth. Uh, people are much worse at long-term investments. Uh, that's my experience. Have a great day.